Once upon a time, many, many moons ago, lived the dragons. They live where the British Isles are today. Now these dragons weren't exactly nice. In fact, they were mean. Dragons in the past were kind and caring, yet over time, they lost their awareness. It may seem strange to us, but they love to bicker and quarrel. They love to be angry. They love to create war. That was their form of excitement. This went on for thousands of years. You see, dragons can live to a dear old age. These dragons cause a lot of discomfort in the countryside in the British Isles. Imagine waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning and seeing your precious cow taken away by the dragons. Man would hide all viables and jewels. The dragons had a sixth sense to find them and steal them. It was true that dragons loved to hoard their wealth. Unfortunately, they couldn't do anything with them. They just loved to sit in their caves and sit on their wealth. Greed came upon them. They didn't know how to share it with one another. Consequently, there was a lot of fighting with one another. It seemed like where life was miserable. There was no contentment in their life, no happiness or kindness, not even love. All the dragons were in the same empty boat. They were like ghosts where nothing could fill them up. No wonder man was fearful of the dragons. They were horrible beings. They were up to no good. Man had good reason to be wary of them. During the crusades, man had the weapons to start fighting the dragons. It was not a glorious time for man and dragons. Many of the traits the dragons had man embraced. It seemed like man and dragons at this point in time had misery in common. Both of them lost the true direction to find the hidden jewel inside. You can't blame them. They never knew it existed inside. The years went by and the conflict never got better. It just got worse. The dragons were being hunted down and killed one by one. It wasn't a pretty sight. One day, a baby dragon was born during the darkest times. This dragon couldn't relate to anger, war, and greed. All the other dragons thought he was a misfit. All he wanted to do was have fun. He was extremely intelligent and had a lot of humor. He made other dragons laugh. The elders disapproved of this. When he learned to fly, he would go off alone and soar in the sky. He was free at that moment, not a care in the world. He loved that feeling. Somehow he knew that the true nature of a dragon is true freedom. He discovered that kindness, love, compassion, and patience was his true nature. Well, the old elder dragons did not like that at all. They told him that he had to stop this nonsense. You see the other young dragons like what they were seeing. They looked how Saran, the young dragon, was turning their lives upside down. They thought that war, anger, and stealing was truly the way. Now, a young dragon, Zoran, clearly walked on a different path and didn't have a care in the world. Zoran's father had a huge pile of precious jewels, yet Zoran wasn't interested in the slightest. He told his dad the greatest jewels in the universe lie inside. Well, but that didn't go over so well. Dad was furious. He was already furious and angry. Remember at that time, the 
dragons had quite the temper tantrums. Well, this was like putting gasoline on the fire. His dad exploded. Who do you think you are to say such a thing? Saran knew not to say anything. Sometimes it's wise to be silent. All of the other elders talked with one another about this situation. What are we going to do with Saran? He is wrecking havoc with his tribe. They decided to give him a little time to see if anything would change. Well, it didn't. Saran was moment by moment learning how to meditate. He was diving deeper than ever inside of the infinite ocean within. Now you see, these dragons are scared of water. Of water. They are fire dragons. Water will extinguish the fire within. Water will extinguish war, anger, and greed. They thought this was their true nature. Saran discovered something that the entire dragon world didn't know. You are the universe. You just don't know it. Well, that was the final straw. They had a council meeting and decided to throw him out. He was still young for a dragon. He was a hundred years old. You see, the dragons could live for thousands of years. So he was told to leave and never return. He was cast out of his home. But there's another story to this. A few young dragons deciding to go secretly along with Saran on his grand adventure. Saran at this time was getting guidance within. One dark and moonless night, they flew out of the cave, never to return again. The rest is history. Saran hears the east might be a great place to go. They had high and magnificent mountains far from man and other dragons. Up until that night, dragons were extremely rare in the east. They were quite unknown. So they flew away into the darkness of night. The journey was just starting. They had no idea the steps they were going to take. Saran and his friends traveled only during the night. They didn't want other dragons or man to discover them on their flight. When they flew over the lakes, rivers, seas, and oceans, they would eat the fish along the way. Fish was extremely plentiful. They discovered it was tastier than cow. Furthermore, they didn't have to be worried stealing cow and being captured. Man was slowly learning how to trap the dragon. There were even dragon slayers as a profession. Times have changed. It took three solid months to arrive at their destination. They landed in the high mountains in Tibet, far from man and other dragons. It was winter time. They had to fly in fierce snowstorms and bitter winds. Fortunately, they were fire dragons and could keep warm. A water dragon might have frozen to death. Saran and friends found a beautiful cave to live in. It was huge and had an opening where they could fly in and out. So they set up camp and called it home. Well, winters last for a long time to bed, especially at high altitudes. You can only have so much external conversation with one another. Saran taught them how to meditate. It was slow going at first. None of the dragons realized how powerful the mind was. Saran simply instructed them to follow their breath. The dragons thought this should be easy. They learned that was more difficult than learning how to fly. You see, even for dragons, flying took time and effort. You had to work at it. They say conquering your mind is the most difficult thing in the universe. Well, 
the young dragons will completely agree since it was winter time they had all the times in their lives slowly i mean slowly they took small baby steps along the way when winter was over they took to the skies they loved the external and internal feelings of flying wow i'm free i'm not bound to anything the seasons came and went winter has arrived again they spent their time in meditation imagine this went on for hundreds of years saran and his friends were discovering they were the universe the universe existed inside of them they were truly discovering their true nature they were becoming wise they knew how to laugh and play they truly enjoyed each other's company these dragons lost their old eagles from the past they became the first master dragons of their time mind you for their time dragons are eternal they are timeless Zoran and his friends discovered that their true essence was the universe well one day an incident occurred while the dragons were flying and having a merry good time some small youngsters saw the dragons in the sky they got very excited they heard old folk tales from their ancestors about dragons flying in the sky as youngsters they didn't want to worry their parents their moms and dads already had too much on their plate you see they were farmers and herders life was tough enough as it was they didn't need another burden these youngsters started to see them fly and fall on often during the spring summer and fall during the winter they never saw them this went on for many seasons the youngsters married had children and their children had children it was now a common sight to see yet nobody ever saw them in person they were like the ufo's we see today you see them but never have a close encounter one day during spring, a group of youngsters went exploring. They saw this huge cave with a large opening. They decided to go in. They weren't scared, but were hesitant. Slowly, they walked, step by step, into the cave. To their amazement, they saw, they saw Saran and his friends meditating. It was a sight to behold. They weren't scared at all. In fact, they were so happy and full of love. They had never experienced anything quite like it. The dragons woke up and saw the children sitting there with their eyes wide open. They couldn't believe what they saw. Now the dragons don't speak their language, but they have the capability for non-verbal communication. This means Without saying words, the children could hear from inside of them what the dragon said. The children never saw such a thing like this before. This started a brand new life for the children. They were told, don't tell anyone else. Someday, when this time is right, we will show ourselves to the village. These children came back day after day. The dragons took them on flying rides, which are still being talked about today. Imagine flying on the backs of the dragons. They never experienced such freedom and joy. The dragons slowly taught them how to meditate. They taught them and showed them that kindness, love, and compassion is the true way to live. They did not preach or try to convince anyone. The dragons were pure and didn't have anything to prove, yet their essence rubbed off on the youngsters. Slowly, over time, they embraced these qualities. Mind you, this is a time in Tibet, in China, where war was all around. 
the same problems that existed in the West existed in the East. Generation after generation, the youngsters migrated to the dragons. The parents and grandparents knew what was going on. They had spent precious time with the dragons and took their wisdom into their daily lives. You see, the spiritual path is the most practical path. These small villages were becoming wise. One was a young boy named Confucius. He was seeing his transformation from the dragons and put them into practice. He discovered a system that is still in place in China today. All his wisdom came from spending time with the dragons. He then carried it on his journey in life and he and we have a great tradition today. One of the earliest students was La Su. He was truly a man of nature. He spent a considerable amount of time with the dragons. Even at a young age, he was wise beyond his time. Even the dragons were amused at his knowledge and wisdom. At times, it seemed that his wisdom was beyond theirs. Mind you, these dragons were thousands of years old. Latsu was only around 10 years old. Needless to say, there was great friendship and understanding with each other. At that time, China and Tibet couldn't understand the simplicity of Latsu and the dragons. Latsu really didn't care about politics and worldly affairs. He hardly ever went to cities. They were a complete distraction. Man really wasn't open to wisdom or knowledge at this time. So Latsu spent a lot of time with the dragons in nature. You see, Latsu, Latsu could see the unity of all life. There is a story that when Latsu was going to leave this world, a small group approached him high in the mountains. They begged for some insight and wisdom. Today, we have the Tao Te Ching, one of the greatest books. Latsu went with some dragons and never returned. His wisdom is still alive today. Today, the dragons are revered, revered all over the East. Wherever you go in China, you will see dragons as flags or statues. Their wisdom is still alive today. Unfortunately in the West, not much has changed. Dragons are something to be fearful of. Stories are still being told of dragons hoarding wealth. Dragon slayers were the savior of mankind. Isn't it amazing? The time really hasn't changed much. We still are angry. We still think that wars can solve our issues. Maybe, just maybe, we can learn from the dragon. Our nature is the universe. The new dawning of man is here.